recorded live. Hi, folks. This is Mike again. Um, we got Jorg from uh, Jungler 66 on again. He's got a lot of information to share with you, folks. Uh, first of all, I uh, want to apologize for the humming and the buzzing. I'm going to try to do my best to eliminate as much as possible. So when Jorg is talking, you're going to mute out. But that's, as you know, anyone has been following for a while now. This past week, I've had nothing but computer problems. So now it looks like I have headset problem. And but anyways, with that, I will hand it over to our friend York. How are you doing, brother? I'm fine, Michael. Thanks for having me on again. It's a real pleasure. It's something that I start to look out in the beginning of the week until finally the day has come that we meet to make another broadcast. Um, I very much enjoy this stuff because you know, I have the possibility to talk a little bit longer than 15 minutes, uh, what I'm limited to when I make videos on YouTube. Um, you know, have to know on YouTube I have two channels. Uh, the first one, and that is also the one that you can best contact me through, uh, is uh, Joggler66. And um, there, of course, I have had a few copyright strikes because in the beginning I just uh, copied movies from the Internet that were very interesting and furthering my agenda of waking up myself and waking up other people and I wanted to spread the news. And, of course, uh, you know, uh, the last uh, two years, uh, Google and all the other companies are driving a very, very uh, hard policy on copyright. So when you have a video that's about, I don't know, two hours long and there's a 10 second uh, part of uh, music in that, of course, somebody has the rights to because he's the artist and they can get you a copyright infringement uh, notice. And when you have three notices, your channel is gone. So far, I have had two. <laughs> so after I received the second, I made up a second YouTube channel that is called Joggler's War on Disinfo in one word, but that doesn't have that much attention as my first channel has, uh, about 60,000 views, and with the first channel I'm almost at uh, a million views right now. Um, but I, I had that backed up and uploaded all the important mo uh, films there also, but generally what I'm going to say is I just have 50 minutes to express myself on YouTube, also on the second channel I could do longer uploads, but you know, Point being, in 15 minutes you cannot say that much, um, and here on the show I can explit, uh, explain things a little bit deeper, and we can go even from one subject to another as long as it's uh, interesting for our listeners. So everybody who has been listened before, I welcome you back if you are back today, and everybody who is new to this broadcast, I welcome uh, very warm in the name of Jesus Christ. We are doing this broadcast here. Um, Michael and I, we are very devout followers of uh, Jesus Christ. We accept um, Sola Scriptura, meaning um, the Bible only is our reference, uh, especially when we deal about things and uh, of identifying the truth and of identifying the righteous way of us to walk in this world. And we base that on um, the Bible um, that is uh, known as the King James Version of 1611. That is the basis of ours. Because for anybody who is listening and who also maybe uh, doesn't know which Bible to follow because there are so many Bibles out there that sometimes you don't know whether this is the true word of God or not, the only thing that I can say is that all the search, all the research that I and a lot of other people did is that for English-speaking people, the AV1611 King James Version is the most trustable Bible in the English version, in English. I'm just talking about English. I'm not talking about any other language, but then you have to see that the translation is right. You know, my native language is German, and uh, I always wanted to get a Lutheran Bible, and I have a Lutheran Bible from the Internet. Uh, I downloaded it. It's the version from 1545 from Luther. But the problem is that the Bible is written in handwriting in these old German letters and in old German style that even to me, as a German, it's uh, kind of like uh, dealing with another language and very hard to read. Uh, then I found the same Bible as a PDF in 14, 1545, uh, Old Testament and New Testament. But there also the wordings are sometimes uh, archaic just old, just 
the way that you don't understand them very well. So I ordered a Lutheran Bible, but that seemed to be the Lutheran Bible from 1984, something like that, and uh, I found some faults in there. So the reason why the KGV from 1611 is the Bible to check out, uh, I give you some links that you can follow to verify what I'm saying. Walter Feit, uh, who is, sorry to say, working for Amazing Discoveries, with which, which is a 501c3 organization, and we will go into that later, what that means. But uh, he uploaded uh, a very nice movie called A Battle of the Bibles, where he explains the origins of Bibles like the NIV um, and uh, uh, the Douay Bible, which is, of course, the Jesuit Bible, and, and, and the KGV, and he explains where uh, the different, where the sources are for the different Bibles. Um, I don't go into that right now. You can watch the video. Just uh, type in YouTube, Battle of the Bibles. And then you have two other parts that follow that if you want to go do a deeper study. And those videos are called Changing the Words, part one and part two. So in total, it's, I think, a three three-part lecture, and every part is uh, at least an hour and a half long. So there you will get a lot of information why the KGV is the most trustable Bible in English, and that is the basis for our working that we do here on the broadcast and that I do on my YouTube channel. Uh, of course, on my YouTube channel, that was not in the beginning that way, because in the beginning when I started my YouTube channel, I wasn't even an uh, active believer in God. But uh, as you heard already in, uh, I think, the first show that we made, it was that journey uh, of um, searching for the truth and getting into the New World Order studies that brought me to God. So the broadcast that we are doing here today, uh, we are doing in the name of Jesus Christ because he is the truth. Or as he said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but through me. So... We dedicate, of course, all our work for him because it is not about us. It is all about him. It's all about Jesus. And it's all about our Heavenly Father who made us. So, um, last week we were talking about the so-called Ten Commandments of the Devil. Or, uh, as you remember, um, that were the points uh, made by Alice Bailey. And uh, we were just uh, mentioning Alice Bailey and the connections of her. Alice Bailey had connections to Helena Blavatsky. Helena Blavatsky was um, the founding person of Theosophy, which is uh, a, uh, how do you say that, a fusion between theology and philosophy, um, where theology is actually... Um, the belief in, in, in God or religious founded point of view, whereas philosophy is more the human based point of view. So they merge these two and that's theosophy and from this theosophy raised the movement of new age, the new age mu movement. So I'm not going, <clears throat> I'm not going back into um, the 10 points that we mentioned last week. Um, because we've done that excessively in uh, almost two um, broadcasts. But what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to read to you uh, a document that is called Lucis Trust, the Spiritual Foundation of the United Nations, and by that, the impact of Lucis Trust into the United Nations. So I'm going to start reading, and I want to ask you, Michael, uh, whenever you want to, please interrupt me, ask questions, whatever that I'm not doing here. I am monologue of two hours or something like that. <laughs> You're yeah, no problem. I just <laughs> minimize the buzzing as much as possible. So. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay that you mute in the meantime. But I mean, uh, always feel welcome to, to interrupt me or to ask questions or whatever that we can discuss. Or when I read something that you say, oh, I really want to say something to this point, then just uh, go there and, and see to interrupt me in a moment when I take my breath or whatever and, <laughs> and, and then you can participate in that because it is this uh, conversation what I appreciate the most uh, doing this broadcast here other than my videos where I'm always alone so. okay <laughs> sounds good okay so I'm going to start uh, this, 
the Lewis's Trust is the publishing house which prints and disseminates United Nations material. It is a devastating indictment of the new age and pagan nature of the UN. Lucifer Trust was established in 1922 as Lucifer Trust by Alice Bailey as the publishing company to disseminate the books of Bailey and Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society. The title page of Alice Bailey's book, Initiation, Human and Solar, was originally printed in 1922 and clearly shows the publishing house as Lucifer Publishing, colon, 1923. Bailey changed the name to Lucifer's Trust because Lucifer Trust revealed the true nature of the New Age movement too clearly. This is mentioned in Constance Cumbie's work, The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow, page 49. A quick trip to any New Age bookstore will reveal that many of the hardcore New Age books are published by Lucifer's Trust. At one time, the Lucifer's Trust office in New York was located at 666 United Nations Plaza and is a member of the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations under a slick program called World Goodwill. End quote reading here. Um, we will later, when we go on Lucifer's Trust's homepage and read about the about, uh, go more into this World Goodwill. So please remember where that actually comes from. Continue reading. In an Alice Bailey book called Education for a New Age, she suggests that in the New Age, world citizenship should be the goal of the enlightened with a world federation and a world brain. In other words, a one world government, new world order. Lucy's Trust is sponsored by, among others, Robert McNamara, former Minister of Defense in the United States of America, President of the World Bank, member of the Rockefeller Foundation, and Thomas Watson, who worked for IBM and is a former ambassador in Moscow. Lucy's Trust sponsors, among others, are the following organizations. United Nations, Greenpeace International, Greenpeace United States of America, Amnesty International, and UNICEF. The United Nations has long been one of the foremost world harbingers for the new spirituality and the gathering new world order based on ancient occult and Freemasonic principles. Seven years after the birth of the UN, a book was published by the theosophist and founder of Lucy's Trust, Alice Bailey, claiming that, quote, evidence of the growth of the human intellect along the needed receptive lines for the preparation of the new age can be seen in the planning of various nations and in the efforts of the United Nations to formulate a world plan. From the very start of this unfoldment, three occult factors have governed the development of all these plans, end quote. This is from Alice Bailey's book, Discipleship in the New Age, Lucy's Press, 1955, volume 2, page 35. Although she did not spell out clearly the identity of these three occult factors, she did reveal to her students that, quote, within the United Nations is the germ and seed of a great international and mediating reflective group, a group of thinking and informed men and women in whose hands lies the destiny of humanity. This is largely under the control of many force ray disciples. <clears throat> if you could but realize it, uh, if she could but realize it, and their point of meditative focus is the institutional or Buddhic plane, the plane upon which all hierarchical activity is today to be found. That is from page 220 of the same book. To this end, the Lucis Trust, under the leadership of Foster and Ellis Bailey, started a group called World Goodwill, an official non-governmental organization within the United Nations. The stated aim of this group is, quote, to cooperate in the world of preparation for the appearance of for the reappearance of the Christ. 
This quote is taken from One Earth, the magazine of the Fintown Foundation, October and November 1986, Volume 6, Issue 6, page 24. But the esoteric work inside the UN does not stop with such recognized occult groupings. Much of the impetus for, uh, impetus for this process was initiated through the officership of two secretary generals of the UN, Doug Hammarskjöld, held office between 1953 and 1961, and Hugh Thand, held office between 1961 and 1971, who succeeded him and one assistant secretary general, Dr. Robert Muller. In a book written to celebrate the philosophy of Teilhard de Chardin and edited by Robert Muller, is revealed. Just uh, making a little pause here before I do a quote. Teilhard de Chardin is also mentioned in a video that I saw yesterday um, that is from the YouTube channel, um, even at the doors. He did uh, lately a few videos called A New World Disorder, and an update of that, uh, of, new, of New World Disorder, a second part, and in between he did another video uh, about the connection of the Jesuits and um, Catholics and uh, uh, and, and, and working out the, the, the Reformation in there. And in that video, he mentioned Teilhard de Chardin. So you maybe want to check that video out. Just go to um, YouTube channel, even at the doors, and uh, check out the latest three or five videos that he made, uh, especially the, the, the ones that he made between New World Disorder 1 and New World Disorder Update. Uh, there in between is a video, and I think it was about 35 minutes or whatever. I took some notes yesterday from the video, but um, I didn't write down the name of the video, I think. Just taking a look here, because I wrote down so many things yesterday, but no, I didn't uh, didn't do that. But okay. Um, going on, but that is for Taylor de Chardin. Okay, now there comes a quote from Robert Muller. Um, quote, Dach Hammarskjöld, the rational Nordic economist, had ended up as a mystic. He too held at the end of his life that spirituality was the ultimate key to our earthly fate in time and space. End quote. So this Dach Hammarskjöld was a secretary general of the United Nations. And is here said to be that he held at the end of his life that spirituality was the ultimate key to our earthly life uh, our earthly fate in time and space. This quote comes from Robert Muller from the design to be human. I'm not reading the whole uh, source here. You can always uh, ask me for that later. I will tell you that. Three, Shinmoy, the New Age guru, meditation leader at the UN, wrote, The United Nations is the chosen instrument of God. To be a chosen instrument means to be a divine messenger carrying the banner of God's inner vision and outer manifestation. End quote. William Jasper, author of A New World Religion, describes the religion of the United Nations. Quote, a weird and diabolical convergence of New Age mysticism, pantheism, aboriginal animism, atheism, communism, Socialism, Luciferian occultism, apostate Christianity, Islam, Taoism, Buddhism, and Hinduism. End quote. <laughs> Sorry, I'm starting to laugh here because is there anything that is pagan that he didn't count in there? <laughs> he describes the religion of the United States as that. I mean, come on. Why don't people read more? <laughs> oh, it's so funny, you know, over here in Belgium, we just had um, a national exposition in, in Antwerp uh, about uh, about books. It's an annual something they do. It's, it's, it's called the Bookenburs. So that means uh, it's an exposition. You have like a big exposition hall and all about books, 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 books. <laughs> you know, well, there is always, uh, what books do they have there in these exhibitions? The only books today that are sold are entertainment books like novels, of course cooking books because people have forgotten how to prepare good food, so cooking books 
are very much sold. And everything that has to do with um, sexuality, now with this new movement uh, of the gay, lesbian, transsexual, whatever, movement, uh, everything that is new age, all this stuff sells. Uh, ask yourself how much Bibles are sold there and uh, how uncorrupt those Bibles were. Probably not too much. When you read this from William Jasper, I think it is very powerful. So I'm going to just read it again. The author of A New World Religion, William Jasper, describes the religion of the United uh, Nations. Quote, A weird and diabolical convergence of New Age mysticism, pantheism, aboriginal animism, atheism, communism, socialism, luciferian occultism, apostate Christianity, Islam, Taoism, Buddhism, and Hinduism, end quote. I think that if the average man on the street knew that the UN is not only by William Jasper, author of the book, described by, by these words, but also that you just have to look at your actions, at their actions, because like in the Bible, it is said, by their fruits you will know them, not by the things they say. I think that would maybe wake some people up. But of course, this is in a world, uh, this is in a book like A New World Religion, and there are not many people who read books like this, and still then, there are not many people who even uh, believe things that are written in those books, because it's all conspiracy theory, uh, you know. Okay, I continue reading. Um, at the webpage of Lucis Trust, uh, www.lucistrust.org, you can find out much more about them and how they're involved with the work of, with the work of United Nations by following their link, World, World Goodwill, at the top of their homepage. So that's, I announced that, and we are going uh, to go deeper into that uh, a little bit later, oh, when I'm really done with this. Anyway, um, I just want to make a little break here and uh, ask everybody who is listening into this broadcast right now, if you have any questions or any things that you want to mention or whatever, uh, you have the possibility there to uh, write a text message and uh, participate in this uh, uh, in this broadcast, and I will, and probably Michael uh, as well. Uh, we will see if, you, if we can uh, get that in, and then we can maybe even get a discussion on points like this, as far as we are able to, because, you know, we are not all-knowing, <laughs> and we never claim to, but uh, so we can make it a little bit interactive. So I have, um, I have the page opened where you can uh, write your... Uh, comments in, so I will see that, Michael will see that, and if we want to, we can always uh, put this in. Michael, something you want to say? Real fast, I just want to say, it's amazing how uh, the UN, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a total attack on the Bible and on Christianity, and everything you just said there, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really quite profound, and one must realize it's who, who their, their real enemy is, which is us. Those who believe in the Bible, the Bible believe in Christians. So it's something to keep in mind. But I'm going to try to keep it as quiet as much as possible because of the hissing. But you're doing a great job. I mean, information that you're, you're imparting is like powerful stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. I enjoy myself too, you know. <laughs> I know you're, you're talented at this. It's very great. You have a gift for it. So we're fortunate that you're willing to join us. You know. So thanks. I love to. Don't thank me. I love to. So, um, the next part deals with the, the Aquarian Age community. Um, this website is sponsored by the United Nations and the New World Order philosophy is there. The whole New World Order philosophy is there. Uh, there is a link here and they say this website. So, I'm just going to open that website and see what's it all about. Of the Aquarian Age, Aquarian Age community. Yeah, okay. That's um, that says enough already. <laughs> Just seeing the site opening. Okay, um, the page which explains the work of the Aquarian Age community, as they call it themselves, has this proud quote at the header of their page. 
Quote, Such a grandeur is ahead. Such a great step awaits a fiery affirmation. Our teaching and the affirmation of the higher principles will reveal so much that is great to humanity. A great period is drawing near. Thus we do create together. End quote. That's from Fury World, Volume 3, page 149. Amongst the many enlightening pages on this website, you can easily find fascinating articles entitled The New World Order and the Work of the UN, The World Spiritual Teacher, the Esoteric Community and the United Nations, Preparing the Way for the Reappearance of the World Spiritual Teacher, the Work of the United Nations and the Worldwide Esoteric Community, and many more articles. This is not Christian theology, but New Age paganism. So, be careful. But I think when you open that website, <laughs> you will see that directly. You know, uh, It's quite um, visible when you look at the symbols and the way they write on the first page already. Um, here's another quote by Curtis Dahl. Dahl, probably you don't know him, but he was F.D. Roosevelt's son-in-law. And he's quoted in his book, My Exploited Father in uh, father-in-law. Oh, yeah. Quote, For a long time I felt that FDR had developed many thoughts and ideas that were his own to benefit this country, the United States. But he didn't. Most of his thoughts, his political ammunition, as it were, were carefully manufactured for him in advance by the Council on Foreign Relations One World Money Group. Just going to stop this um, quote right here. Manufactured for him in advance by the Council on Foreign Relations. Who is the Council on Foreign Relations? The Council on Foreign Relations is a kind of secret society, but it's not that secret because they have their own website. You can go on to that. CFR.com, I guess. Uh, you will find that in Google anyway, no problem. They have as a symbol the Pegasus, that is the horse with wings, and the Council on Foreign Relations is Jesuit founded and Jesuit controlled and Jesuit run. Continue the quote from Curtis Dell. Brilliantly, with great gusto, like a fine piece of artery, he exploded that prepared ammunition in the middle of an unsuspecting target, the American people, and thus paid off and returned his internationalist political support. The UN is but a long-range international banking apparatus, nearly set up for financial and economic profit by a small group of powerful one-world revolutionaries, hungry for profit and power. The depression was the calculated shearing of the public by the world money powers, triggered by the planned sudden shortage of supply of coal money in the New York money market. The one world government leaders and their ever close bankers have now acquired full control of the money and credit machinery of the United States via the creation of the privately owned Federal Reserve Bank. End quote. I don't think that I have to go deeper into this, but I can promise you the site that I have looked up that we will go deeper into today, uh, one of the sites that I'm going to read from later on, is called the Vatican and the Jesuits, and that also deals, of course, with that. So I'm not going any deeper into this right now. Just saying, okay, this was the article or the page that I read about uh, the connection of Lucy's Trust and the spiritual foundation of the United Nations. So, you know, an interesting um, anecdote maybe to say here about this. Uh, the United Nations had a predecessor that was called the League of Nations. That League of Nations was uh, formed after World War I, and the United States of America neglected to join the League of Nations. They didn't want to at that time. 
So I think that the stronghold of the Jesuits at the United States at that time wasn't as strong after the First World War as it was after the Second World War. Because uh, there, of course, the United States were one of the founding nations of the United Nations. And when you think about the things that I just read to you from this article, from this webpage, uh, you have to consider there is always, with things like this, an esoteric and an exoteric meaning. What I mean by this is the esoteric is what the people who are involved in these organizations, certainly on a high level, uh, they know what the real meaning of these organizations and what the real goals of these organizations and what the real intentions of these the meanings and what the real ways of achieving their goals are. And there is the exoteric, and that is what they show to the layman, to you, to me, to your family, to the people who are not in the higher level, the people who are not that much integrated into that knowledge, esoteric and exoteric knowledge. It's the same with Freemasonry. You know, when you know someone who is Freemason and he is very proud because he is a master of Freemasonry, because he has the third degree of Freemasonry and he's a master Mason. <laughs> Sorry. I have to laugh at these people when they think if they, if they think that they really know what it's all about. They have no clue. Uh, they have no clue what Freemasonry is all about. And there's a quote from Helena Blavatsky, and in, in I think it is in her book Isis Unveiled. I'm not sure about that, but I know that it is from her. And that she said, wherever you go in Freemasonry and and, and uh, and Jesuits and 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 uh, knight and papal knighthoods and wherever you go, the higher you go and and uh, to see who is in charge, uh, at the end you will come out at one person and that is the Black Pope, the general of the Society of Jesus, who stands above it all, all Freemasonry and all secret societies. She wrote that and she wrote that in her book and uh, I unveiled as I think written, uh, yeah somewhere at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, when Helena Blavatsky was alive. So, you always uh, have to keep that in mind, that there is, when you deal with any organization, there's esoteric and there's exoteric knowledge. And because the exoteric knowledge is always something positive, uh, at least at first sight, when you just glance at it, when you just have a little look at it, when you don't go into deeper study of it. That is how they catch many people and that's how so many people are being fans of all this stuff. It's the same with the Roman Catholic Church. When you, when you just don't think about when you just look at the Pope, oh, he's a nice man. Look, he goes into prison. Look, he washes the feet of the prisoners. Look, he's taking that little child in his arms. Well, as a mom, you can be glad when you get that little child back, but <laughs> you know what I mean. But um, uh, when, you, when you see it just like that, of course, then, uh, well, the Vatican is, is wonderful, and look at this, this wonderful church and all this gold and all this, and they, and they are so nice people, and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's the exoteric. Uh, just look a little bit at the deeper meaning of it all, and uh, well, your eyes will really get opened. Anyway, um, I finished this little article, The Spiritual Foundation of the United Nations uh, and the Connections to Lucy's Trust. I will go continue with the Lucy's Trust uh, website. Before that, Michael, is there something that you want to add or want to ask? I just find it interesting that, you know, as we read this stuff that you read or what you're reading, that if you look at Lucy's Trust, that originally it was Lucifer Trust. Yeah, Lucifer's Trust, yeah. And apparently, you know, it became too much of a, a problem for them to be so open about it, so they had to change the name. But, you know, we're talking about its location was 666. United Nations Plaza. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also amazing, too, is that number 
crops up all over the place, and not just in scripture or on the television or in advertisement, but there's an awful lot of buildings in their locations with 666 throughout the, at least the United States. I don't know about the rest of the world, but in this country. And yeah, a lot, a lot of things like, uh, sorry to interrupt you here, but uh, for example, you've got this uh, energy drink, Monster. Monster drink, you know that one? Leave your mic on, so it's, it's okay. Um, you, you got this monster drink, and it's got this three stripes. These three stripes are also uh, a sign for six, six, six. Yeah, oh, yeah. Most, most people don't even know that, and they drink that stuff. Blah. Okay. Or here's an, another little tad tidbit. Um, as far as uh, these FEMA camps and all that go, well, at least during World War II. When they had the prisoner camps in the United States, guess how many num the number was throughout the states? 666 prison camps throughout the United States. They're right. Now, why did they just stop it? Why did they, why did they stop at 666? Why not, you know, 650? Why not 700? Why 666? <laughs> well, I don't know what these concentration camps is. Well, that's interesting, but for example, let, let's just go into something that everybody can put in front of his eyes. In Washington, you have the Washington Monument, this big obelisk. Yeah? Yep. It's right there at the White House. That obelisk is 555 feet high. It's uh, when you when you measure how deep it is beneath. You have the the length and you have the right that you measure. It's 55 and a f and a half foot. The length yeah. and the width is also 55 and a half foot. Now, do the math. And at 55 and a half, plus 55 and a half, plus 555, how much do you get? 666. Voila. Right in your face. <laughs> Hated in plain sight. Isn't that amazing? Oh, it's all coincidence. You're a conspiracy theorist, Michael. Apparently. <laughs> You're paranoid. You know? yeah. Everywhere you go, you see 666, you know. And the problem is, it's actually there. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that is. And when you show it to people, they still do not want to believe it. Like when you show them the roadmap of uh, Washington, and you can see the pentagram that Washington was uh, built on a on a pentagram, the, the way the streets flow, and all that stuff. You can show that to people and say, oh, that's coincidence. Oh, there's nothing to say. No? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting, you know, going back, you know, so it was as the Jesuits and Rome has taken over this country, or this, what, the, let me rephrase this, as they've taken over this portion of North America, you want to call it country, whatever you want, um, they have, as they've done that, things have become more and more satanic. In symbolism, in everything. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. That's why in the Bible, Revelation 13, when we deal with the two beasts, we deal with the first beast that comes out of the sea, that is the Vatican, coming out of the heavily populated area, region of Europe. And you have the second beast, the United States of America, the beast coming out of the earth means a um, well, unpopulated part of the earth because, okay, Indians lived there, the native Indians, the native Americans lived there in North America, but they were about, what, 20 million? So, that's a vastly unpopulated area. And uh, where was I going with this now? Uh, I think you're going with the image of the beast. It's, it's, it's stated there that uh, uh, the second beast uh, is like a lamb with, with two horns. Two horns are standing for the civil and spiritual power. Um, it has two horns like a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. 
and that what you are saying what you were saying right now is exactly that it, it started out as a lamb because it came out of the 13 colonies that were Protestant and then they founded the United States of America and they put in the Constitution the freedom of religion and with the freedom of religion they allowed the Roman Catholic Church into the country because until 1776 it was forbidden for any Catholic to hold office it was forbidden to hold mass Christmas was forbidden all these pagan holidays from the Roman Catholic Church were forbidden and that stopped with the founding of the United States of America so what started out as 13 colonies as a Protestant country Protestant nation was then hijacked in 1776 by um, the um, addition to the, to the Constitution with the freedom of religion. And anybody who says, well, that's, oh, of course you can be Protestant and can have freedom of religion, I'm going to ask you one simple question. When you read the Old Testament and the Lord God the Lord of Israel got the people out of Egypt and he led them 40 years through the desert. Did he allow freedom of religion or did he give them at Mount Sinai 10 commandments where the first commandment of them all states I am the Lord thy God, thou God, thy God and you shall have no other gods beside me. Is that freedom of religion? I would say no. <laughs> I don't think God wants you to have freedom of religion. God always warned of other religions. He said when Joshua took the people over the Jordan and went into the land of the Canaanites, he said, don't even look at their idols. Don't even look at their practices. Kill them all. Destroy them all. Don't even look. So there is no freedom of religion under the rule of God and under the law of God. There is only one God. And of course he doesn't allow freedom of religion. It is him or nothing. It's like Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes through the Father but through me. You, you can always connect that sentence with, with freedom of religion. So when you look for another religion than the religion of the belief of Jesus Christ, then you will not come to the Father. And you will not have the possibility of eternal life. Because let's be honest, the earth is about 6,000 years old. And we are here for, I don't know, when you get lucky, 90, 100, maybe a little bit over 100 years, but then you have to get really lucky. And otherwise about, I don't know, 50 years or some. I mean, there are people my age who have died already because of a heart attack and because of other diseases. And, you know, uh, I also have a deadly disease. So I don't know when it's done. can be tomorrow. can be next year. I don't know. I don't care because I found my peace in Christ. But you think these few years given us here is, is everything? That's it? I don't think so. So freedom of religion is just a possibility for somebody who is oppressed to come in through the back door. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah. Well, you know, can't argue with anything you just said. You did a masterful job there. Good job. Bro. <laughs> okay. Then I'm going to go on and read a little bit about this Lucis Trust website. Where I'm not reading it all. I'm just flying a little bit over it because there are so many other things that are so important that we have to. Um, but uh, when you go to the Lucy's Trust website, so that is, I, I give you the address and you can look it up while I'm going along here. And www.lucistrust.org. Lucy's Trust. L U C I S T R U S T dot org. And then you go to the about page. Uh, it states the following quote. 
The activities of the Lucy's Trust promote the education of the human mind towards recognition and practice of spiritual principles and values upon which a stable and interdependent world society may be based. Activities. The activities of Lucy's Trust include the worldwide financial support of the Arcane School, the Lucy's Publishing Companies, World Goodwill, we mentioned that before, Triangles, Lucy's Trust Libraries, and Lucy's Productions. <clears throat> By the way, when you go to um, uh, the part here, uh, Publication Store, the first link you have there is Alice Bailey Books, and you, there you can get all the books of Alice Bailey, all this uh, Theosophy New Age stuff you can learn about there. So, one of their activities is um, the Arcane School. What's the Arcane School about? The Arcane School was created by Alice A. Bailey in 1923 as a training school for adult men and women in meditation techniques and the development of spiritual potentiality. The school provides sequential courses of study and meditation and practical training in group service. The Arcane School is conducted by correspondence in eight languages through headquarters in New York, London and Geneva. The Arcane School is non-political and non-secretarian non-sectarian, sorry, all are served. Since 1923, tens of thousands of students have taken advantage of the training. <laughs> advantage, okay. <laughs> no charges are made by the school for its services. The work is financed through the Lucy's Trust by voluntary contributions of students and those interested in the work of the school and in the teaching. Each gives according to personal circumstances. Let's stop reading right here. Just go back to the first paragraph that I just read. The school provides sequential courses of study and meditation, practical training and group service. Wow. Meditation. And it's for the development of spiritual potentiality. This just shouts out spiritual exercises, spiritual formation. Spiritual exercises who were founded by Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, better known as the Jesuits. So right here, in the very first paragraph of the Arcane School, you see what kind of agenda loses trust is following. <clears throat> The Lucis Publishing Companies. The Lucis Publishing Company of New York and the Lucis Press Limited of London, England, published the books written by Alice A. Bailey. The books have a wide distribution in the English language all over the world and have been translated and published in, any, in many European languages. They are also being translated and published in other languages of the world. Publication of the books is financed through a revolving fund under the administration of the Lucy's Trust in order to provide no re for reprinting. Monies contributed to this fund have been used many times over. No royalties are paid and copyrights are owned by the Lucy's Trust. The Beacon Magazine is published bi-monthly by the Lucy's Press. This is a magazine of esoteric philosophy presenting the principles of the ageless wisdom teaching as a contemporary way of life. I don't think that needs much explanation. Triangles. Triangles was founded in 1937 to stimulate the growth of right human relations by uniting like-minded men and women of goodwill in a spiritual service. Triangles is an activity of the mind using the power of thought and of prayer to invoke light and goodwill for all humanity. The work is done by units of three people linked in a worldwide network. The work is financed by the voluntary donations of Triangle's workers to the Lucy's Trust. How bad does it get? We come to World Goodwill, the one I mentioned already in the article before. Hey, well, York, can I pause you there for a second? You were talking about triangles. Yeah? Uh, do you... Uh, are you able to expand more on that? 
Well, it's um, one of the activities of Lucis Trust, like I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, Lucis Trust is uh, <clears throat> uh, the activities of Lucis Trust include the worldwide financial support of the Arcane School, the Lucis Publishing Companies, World Goodwill, Triangles, and Lucis Trust Libraries and Lucis Productions. So that's one of their activities they do, and they just call it Triangles. There's nothing more to go into that. It's just they call it that. And uh, as I read just before this, it's about an activity of the mind using the power of thought and prayer. You can probably say contemplative prayer, of course, uh, which comes from the Jesuits, in the light of goodwill for all humanity. You know, right? Well, triangle. We're talking about the shape triangle, right? Yeah, here in this case, we are just talking about the name triangle, but probably right. we are talking about triangle, we are talking about pyramid. Right. I just, you know, you know, it might not seem like there's any relevance, but I, there seems to be an awful lot of organizations, and if you look back at uh, the book of the, the Grimoires, you know, the ancient spells, they use this, this symbol, the triangle, quite a bit, and then you find stuff like AA, Alcoholics Anonymous with Triangle, this association with the Rockefellers, and the, uh, how many books that have this symbol. I'm just, I'm just curious how much of that, if there's a connection there or not. <clears throat> I'm sure there is. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm just telling you a little bit more about Triangles because uh, you can go to, uh, to another part of, this, uh, of the website and uh, the Triangles is a little bit explained. Uh, a network of light and love. Enlarge the work of the Triangles so that subjectively and ethically Ether with Kelly, uh, light and goodwill may envelop the earth. Um, the world has a spiritual destiny. Behind evolution, there is an abiding purpose, which we can call the plan of God. The plan works out through humanity. We are responsible for understanding it and for doing what we can through our daily living to express its meaning and significance. Triangles aid the divine plan by establishing right human relations and to spread goodwill and understanding amongst all peoples, though the power of constructive thought, understanding, they put behind there in brackets, light, enlightenment, the enlightened ones, get it? This power can be employed on a worldwide scale for spiritual purposes if each one tries to understand the spiritual need of the world. A triangle is a group of three people who link each day in thought for a few minutes of creative meditation. They invoke the energies of light and goodwill, visualizing these energies as circulating through the three focal points of each triangle and pouring out through the network of triangles surrounding the planet. At the same time, they sound the great invocation, <clears throat> which is also explained elsewhere, when you don't want to know what the great invocation is, and so help to form and channel for the downpouring of light and love into the consciousness of humanity. The downpouring of light and love into the consciousness of humanity. People are giving the enlightenment. Lucifer Doctrine. Absolutely. all way. It's amazing. He is the light bearer. Yep. The work takes only a few minutes to perform and can be fitted into the most crowded program. We hope you will join this worldwide group meditation work. Okay, not me, but uh, <laughs> feel free to do so. And there's more... Um, there's more uh, information on all these points that I just mentioned, what Triangle is all about. So I hope this answers your question, Michael, that you just had. And then i like yeah, to continue that's, that's, reading. Yeah. Well, thank you for diverting there. But yeah, well, no part, problem. Part, like, I, I'd be a fascinating study. I guess it's something that I should do sometime down the road is to share more about that. Um, but anyways, we'll get back on track with what you're doing so. My apologies. Thank you for okay. diverging. Um, the next activity Lucis Trust is um, engaging himself in is called World Goodwill. World Goodwill was established in 1932. The overall purpose of World Goodwill is the establishment of right human relations through the practical application 
of the principle of goodwill. World goodwill action at present consists of, first, or one, the distribution of literature all over the world in many languages. Two, the publication of the World Goodwill Newsletter and Commentary. Three, the provision of a study course on the fundamental problems of humanity. Four, cooperation with the United Nations and its specialized agencies. Five, World Service Forums. World Goodwill is recognized by the Office of Public Information at the United Nations as a non-governmental organization. It is represented at regular briefing sessions at the United Nations in New York and Geneva. The work is financed by voluntary donations from those men and women of goodwill concerned to maintain and expand this world service to humanity. Okay, I'm going to stop right here, right now. There's still another point, Lucy's Productions. I'm not going into, into Lucy's Productions. If you want to read that, you can do that for yourself. Uh, they continue by saying, what are the purposes? Purposes. The world activities of the Lucy's Trust are dedicated to the establishment of human rights relations. They promote the education of the human mind towards recognition and practice of the spiritual principles and values upon which a stable and interdependent world society may be based. The Lucis Trust is non-political and non-sectarian. It sponsors no special creed or dogma. The motivating impulse is love of God expressed through love of humanity and service of the human race. End quote. Well, when you are just a person who gets lost on this side, on I don't know whatever reason you come to there, and you just read this and you say, the motivating impulse is love of God, well, that's a good thing then, isn't it? Let's be exoteric. That's what I meant. They catch you with phrases like this. It's for the love of God. But they don't tell you which God. Because when you go into meditation and this prayer groups they have, you know, this contemplative prayer, that is not of the God of the Bible. That is of the prince of this world, Satan. Let's call him what it is. That's why Lucifer's trust formula was Lucifer's trust. That's no accident. I just go for the last little part on this page. The creation and the operation. And now please pay attention. This is very, very important, this first paragraph. The Lucis Trust was incorporated in the United States in 1922. It is officially recognized by the federal government, 501c3 status, and by various state governments as tax exempt. The Luce Trust is registered in Great Britain, Holland, and Germany. It has bank accounts of financial agents in many other countries, including Geneva, Switzerland, where the European headquarters of the world is established. End of the first paragraph. Now, first of all, one of the most important parts in this first paragraph is in the first sentence, that it is recognized by the federal government with a 501c3 status. I could do a whole broadcast only about the 501c3. I'm not going to do that. But if you want more information on that, contact me via my YouTube channel, Jogla66. Ask me to forward you information about the 501c3 status and what's it all about. Some weeks ago, I met a pastor here in Belgium. Bill Schwartz is his name. Uh, he comes from an organization that's... Uh, seems to be a Protestant organization here in Belgium, and I have very much trouble to find anything that uh, is a little bit, you know, on the same page as me by following the Bible. And uh, I, I, I got advice to, to contact him by a friend of mine from, don't laugh now, from Panama. He sent me an address from a church in Belgium, <laughs> where I live. <laughs> Funny. And he came here and he said that he has a mother organization over there in the United States and they are a 501c3. And he didn't know what was wrong with that. 
So I explained it to him. Haven't heard since of him. <clears throat> People don't like the truth, you know. Everybody considers honesty a virtue, but nobody wants to hear the truth. Yep. So, the Lucis Trust is a 501c3 status officially by the federal government recognized organization. It has bank accounts of financial agents in many other countries, including Geneva, Switzerland, where the European headquarters of the work is established. Geneva, Switzerland. Do you remember the broadcast that we had with our friend Sean Ross coming from Switzerland, who is one of these days imprisoned over there for speaking out freely about the truth, about the corrupt Nazi police they have over there in Switzerland? And of course, in Zurich, you have the BIS, a Bank of International Settlement, but that's something that we go into when you read the next article because that's also mentioned there. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, I just want to, concerning Sean, folks, for those who are listening and those that will be listening, that we ask that you pray for him and his family. In the next, when we talked to him on Sunday, he was going to be going into prison very shortly for something that he shouldn't be going to prison for. He's a good man, and he needs our prayers. So could you please pray for him and uh, check out his, his YouTube channels as well. Sean Ross, his first name spelled S-E-A-N, last name H-R-O-S-S. -S. If you type in that, you'll easily find his uh, YouTube channels and support him. There's a lot of good information from that man. So with that, I'll leave it back to you. Yeah, and um, he is from Switzerland, and he will tell you all about um, or a lot about the connection of um, the pharaohs, uh, the Templars, because the Knight Templars founded Switzerland, and who are the revived Templars? Hands up, anybody, if you know? The Jesuits, the Society of Jesus. Okay. I'm going to stop this article uh, about Lucy's Trust here because I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> but really, it's, it, when, you, when you read this with open eyes and when you can read in between the lines and when you can get the esoteric message out of this exoteric message that they put in front of you, you will really actually learn a lot. So I hope this was um, helpful for you all. And I like to get over to the next uh, subject that I was uh, that I had prepared today. There are actually two subjects that I had prepared today. The first is uh, reading from um, a website, Bibliothèque Prepa, uh, Biblio Bibliothèque Pleiades .net. A Very, very, very interesting source of information on the internet, and there I. Um, selected a page called the Vatican and the Jesuits. That's one. But first, I'd like to do a little quote, put something out here and uh, have a little conversation with Michael because when I read, I st just start reading when I'm alone. Uh, I just want to, want to make a quote from a person called Anton LaVey. And I hope I, I think that a few of our uh, listeners are aware of who Anton LaVey is. He is um, the founder of the Church of Satan. He is the author of uh, the Satanic Bible. And Anton LaVey uh, wrote in the Devil's Notebook on page 86, quote, Television is the major mainstream infiltration for the new satanic religion. The TV set, or satanic family altar, has grown more elaborate since the early 50s, from the tiny fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. What started as an innocent respite from everyday life has become in itself a replacement for real life for millions. 
a major religion of the masses. End quote. That's something to think about, isn't it? Michael, did you know this uh, this quote? Um, <clears throat> I've heard a similar things. Uh, it's not surprising at all, as we know. With our, you know, your research, my my own research of how they are using the television and, uh, to indoctrinate folks and slowly into this new satanic system that they want to put us under. It's not surprising at all. And you know, with that video that you shared with me. Uh, last weekend, which, if you ever get a chance, because my computer crashed, I lost that, and you said that again, it was a very powerful four-part series. Um, maybe you could share more folks about that, they could find that. Uh, you, you mean the the Hollywood Satanic Collection there? Oh my gosh, and we watched that stuff, and just the progression that we've seen. Yeah, that was a four-part, is that what you mean? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I can forward that to you, yeah, no problem. Yes. But, I mean, the images that he showed and how he described how, you know, how things... And you brought this up, too, in, in the last show. Um, that's, you know, how even, like, the superhero characters are getting more darker and uh, the yeah. characters on television are getting more darker, much more Luciferian. And, uh, and very much yeah, the best example still, I think, is Batman. Kill about Cat. the last movie, The Dark Knight, you know? Yeah. You remember Batman in the 50s and the 60s when he started, he was just a nice man upholding the law in Gotham City, fighting supervillains, being a good guy, and now turning into something dark. Yeah. <laughs> if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does, but, you know, it's, but not only that, but you look at all the, these, all the characters that are coming out. Uh, what was that one that Sean did with the, the uh, Disney character, the witch, where she has her uterus on top of her head and all that, and um, the wings. Angela uh, Jolie. An An Angelina Jolie. Yes. Uh, yeah. Her name. name. Her name means um, pretty little angel. Yeah. Angelina. Angelina means uh, angel, and, and, and Angelina means the uh, belittling form of angel. And Jolie is French, Jolie for pretty. Right. So Angelona, Angelina Jolie, pretty little angel, without a uterus and without a breast. Yeah, and as you shared before uh, in the previous shows, is that how many of these, uh, you know, famous movie stars, television stars, are Luciferians and Satanists themselves, uh, and are coming out in the open and, and admitting it. I mean, let's look at the Grammys and. The, What's going on there with all the satanic rituals right in front of people's faces? Mm -hmm. and that's a very good YouTube channel. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's a very good YouTube channel who exposes these um, Illuminati uh, in Hollywood uh, and in the music industry. I think his name is Good Fight Uploads or Good Fight Ministries. Good Fight Ministries, I think. And uh, he has very interesting work on YouTube on that. Uh, even uh, people like, for example, Ang Angus Young, you know him, the guitarist from ACDC? Sure. Who states that he, uh, he he can't do the work that he's doing on the podium by himself, but he's possessed. But so many other people uh, that he has interviewed, and uh, where he has interviews from, uh, not he has interviewed, but where he has clips from, people stating that uh, they can only do the work because they are demon-possessed, like, uh, for example, uh, what's this black uh, black actor? Denzel Washington. Yeah, Denzel Washington, who says that he is sometimes uh, being 30 persons. Things like that. It is really um, disturbing. And, and the thing is, that they're, they're slowly coming out in the open. You can see them, you know, indoctrinating <laughs> us, and especially the youth. And uh, I mean, if I look at all the different bands that I used to follow, you know, as a young man, and um, whether it was my. I'm trying to think here. Like Red Hot Chili Peppers, or um, you know, the, all these guys. Everyone, anyone you mentioned. I mean, they—they're all. They literally sell their souls to the devil. It's not even a, a, a figured expression. You no, have and, to. You have to to be successful. And when they try to break out, they are sometimes be caught back again. Um, 
there is a good example of a person that tried to break out. Um, that is, of course, known to everybody. That is Michael Jackson. Yeah. And that's why they killed him. But uh, also another interesting person to watch is, and then she got back into it, Britney Spears. Oh, yeah. You remember the time when she was in the newspaper about that she shaved her head? Oh, yeah. Sure. That was that was about the time when she was cut loose of the demons and when she cut loose of the Illuminati. And they caught her back in there. In there. Mm -hmm. It's the same with um, Eminem. My son is, uh, if he's not the biggest fan of Eminem in the world, then he's the second biggest fan of him. I mean, <laughs> yeah, really. And uh, some years ago, I don't know, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, two years, maximum three years. Uh, it was not m more than three years ago. Eminem was scheduled to appear on a festival here in Belgium called Pickle Pop. And that was around the time that he published an album where all the songs that he wrote in there were about breaking free from the Illuminati control. Uh, I don't know the name of the album right now. Just check that out for yourself if you want to. Uh, there were a lot of songs that were dealing with him breaking away from the devil because he sold his soul to the devil, as he said before. And he tried to break away from there. And at that time, he was going to appear here in, uh, on Prickle Pop on the podium in the festival uh, singing here. And my son bought, uh, bought a ticket to go there. So he was about, I don't know, three years ago, and maybe he was about 19. And the day before the festival started, a tornado came here in Belgium. <laughs> There's never a tornado. <laughs> and crushed through the festival era, took down the podium, killed two or three people, wow. and the whole thing was cancelled. And wow. Eminem never got here. Just think about this. Coincidence? Nothing's a coincidence. <laughs> Nothing is a coincidence. <laughs> you know, and um, when you then go back to the last album that Eminem made, he's 100% back into the Illuminati. He made the song with Rihanna, Rihanna who is uh, like the new Madonna of the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. And... Um, all his songs on his latest albums, everything that he did after this one album is absolutely back into sat satanic worship and uh, slim shady stuff, using drugs, killing people, raping people, you know. He's completely back into it. And uh, when you really try to get, get away, when you really try to get away, well, then you end like Elvis. Uh, then you end like Marilyn Monroe. Then you end like uh, Whitney Houston. Then you end like um, this other one. Who was that there? Uh, she did this. Uh, I didn't like the music very much. Um, she had this long black hair. Uh, some years ago she died. Uh, uh, from England. Uh, what's her name? Um, oh, I, know what you're saying, I know you're saying. Uh, I can't think. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but you know I'm not listening to all this music anymore. But, I know. Uh, I can't remember anything. Half the stuff I used to listen to, the names either. I mean, I used to be a musician and all that too. I can play quite a bit out in, in bars and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. Yeah, I just don't have any desire for it. Anymore, just, so. just, you know, and, 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 uh, one of the videos, and uh, I, have, I have the link here, and I can give you the link later if you want to, Michael. Uh, uh, in this in this video, there's uh, explained what the word entertainment means when you split it up, when you analyze the word. Uh, television is of course for entertainment, okay? Right. So, what does this entertainment stand for? Enter means to come in. Tain means to possess. Yeah. And meant is the state of where you mentally are. So entertainment means to come in, possess, and keep in a state of possession. And that is exactly what television does. 
Absolutely. And when you see it, when you regard it like this, and then you read again the sentence that I just read about Anton LaVey, the TV set, or as he liked to call it, the Satanic Family Altar. <laughs> Which it does. <laughs> it absolutely is. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know. This is just in your face, you know. It's just in your face. So, uh, Michael, I'm going to ask you. We are in for an hour and 17 minutes right now. Okay. Um, I ask you, what do you want to continue? Do you want to continue on the video that I told you about um, the statements of the, uh, that the Pope has done about uh, what the Pope is all about? that I can read the statements, or do you want to go, which I like to prefer, <laughs> uh, into the page uh, that I read from the Vatican and the Jesuits? Uh, what, uh, what's your preference? Well, you know, as far as quotes from the Pope, I mean, they're all out there online everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, why don't we just go with the latter one, like you said, you want to do, and it sounds... Cool. You know, if you I, still if you still want to I go like, back, if you still want to go back to the quotes of the Pope, that's fine. But um, I like I like the quotes of the Pope too. But I think that it's maybe uh, an idea that we do on another broadcast uh, when we prepare both a little stuff that we can share then, and we can call that exposing the Roman Catholic cult. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Well, that's, that's definitely what it is. <laughs> it's the largest cult in the world. Uh, because so. the, the video is also called uh, six, uh, six Signs to Identify a, a, cult, uh, a Cult. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but then we do it uh, next time. I, I'd love to. And um, we can see how far we get uh, when I read this site right now, because I'm really on fire and I won't, do not want to stop right now. <laughs> Well, I'm going to mute out so you can go. That yeah, that's, that's okay. But uh, please uh, feel free to come in every time you want to to uh, interrupt me or whatever. And uh, I'm just going to read that side right now. Okay. Well, folks who haven't heard this show yet with York, usually I do. If I, <laughs> York does a really good job of keeping on track because I usually take him this way and that way and everywhere. But today, because of the hissing of my audio I, or my headset, I don't want to say too much because it's just going to take away too much from the show. So. All right, bro. Go ahead. I'm going to get out. Okay. So I'm reading a little bit from a website that is entitled The Vatican and the Jesuits. And uh, I'm quite sure we don't cover it all today because I went through it uh, in a rush. And uh, it's not only very long to, to read from back to uh, from, fr from, uh, from the beginning to the end, but also it is linked to, of course, other sites like uh, to the Jesuits itself, uh, to the black nobility, uh, sociopolitica, uh, masons and knights templars, and the dark history of the Vatican. These are all sites linked to just this one site that I'm going to read from right now. So when you start this, you are in for a long journey. So I hope everybody has taken a little time to uh, a little uh, bathroom break. <laughs> we can continue right now. Oh, when I need to go to the bathroom, you will hear because I'm going to say uh, Michael take over for five minutes. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I'm going to start reading the Vatican and uh, the Jesuits. And I will start with a quote that is from John F. Kennedy, uh, probably a person that you all heard about, and even a speech that you all uh, heard about, because it is his so-called secret society speech on April 27th in 1961. And... Um, there's one thing that is not in this quote, but uh, I will add that to this quote, and uh, then you will understand what this is all about. So, I'm quoting JFK. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society, for we, as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret proceedings, and to secret oaths. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covered means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, 
on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political, political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned. No rumor is printed. No secret is revealed. End quote. I made a little mistake in the beginning because the part that I really want to emphasize from this quote is in here, but I just read over it before, so it's no problem. And that is one of the most important things, that is the, the most important part of this whole speech that probably never the people really understood because every, otherwise, I mean, JFK was killed two years later, two and a half years later, because the speech is from April 27, 61. He was killed November 22, 1963. By the way, November 22, 11, 22, 11 and 22 is 33. Okay. Um, he says, For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy. This is the most important sentence of his whole speech. A monolithic conspiracy. That means it comes out from one person or one place. And you can even put it down to one person. Satan and his representative on earth, the Pope, where I can now lay the link to the video that I told you we are going to talk about, who calls himself the Vicar of Christ, but is actually the Antichrist. When we quote the Catholic, uh, Catholic National from July 1895, quote, the Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, he is Jesus Christ himself, hidden under the veil of flesh. End of quote. This is only one of the many quotes that the Popes themselves did about uh, how they see themselves here on earth as God himself or as Jesus Christ. And that means Antichrist, and Antichrist is satanic, so that's Satan. And John F. Kennedy says here in his speech, for we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy. Monolithic. That is the key word of this speech, which sadly most people didn't get, because otherwise he maybe still was alive. On the other hand, don't forget, John F. Kennedy was, first of all, the first American president who was openly a Catholic, and even though that he said that he is against secret societies, John F. Kennedy himself was a Knight of Columbus. And his whole family are in the Knight of Columbus order. So, but sometimes you need people to come out of there and speak freely, like also Alberto Rivera did. But I think this speech of <clears throat> John F. Kennedy is a very good introduction into the rest of the page that I'm going to read. I'm going to read, even though it starts just now with the introduction, uh, the Vatican and the Jesuits, what are the Jesuits, what is the Jesuit order? So I continue reading right now in this article. The Jesuit order is an almost 500-year-old covert operations, geopolitical, male-only organization, structured as a secret military operation demanding secret oaths and complete obedience to each direct superior, which is ultimately the superior general, often nicknamed as the Black Pope, since he dresses in black and stands in the shadow of the White Pope. The Society of Jesus, as they are officially known, was originally used by the Vatican to counter the various Reformation movements in Europe, to which the Vatican lost much of its religious and political power. 
Absolute temporal ruling power has always been the Vatican's institution's primary objective. The Jesuit order is since 1814 in complete control of the obscenely wealthy Vatican institution and its Catholic clergy hierarchy and presently also controls various other organizations together with the military order of Malta, such as the United Nations, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, the European Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, various central banks, if not to say all of them, big corporations, for example, Monsanto, secret services, all intelligence agencies, CIA, NSA, MI5, MI6, Mossad, BND, KGB, FSD, whatever they are called, all these intelligence agencies all around the world are under the control by the Jesuits through their papal knighthood organizations, the military order of Malta, or as also known the SMOM, means the Supreme Military Order of Malta. We go a little bit deeper into that later. Numerous societies and cults such as Freemasonry, the Brotherhood and Opus Dei. Um, that was only a little, a little part that I read today, but I can, on, on this part alone, I can do a broadcast of three or four hours just to analyze this and go deeper into this. Uh, the Jesuit order since 1814 and complete military control, so I just want to tell to our listeners, if, if you are not aware of that, the Society of Jesus, I'm just uh, not reading this, this is now uh, a free-handed speech. <laughs> the Society of Jesus was um, founded in 1534 by Ignatius of Loyola and uh, Francis Xavier. Um, they got papal recognition by uh, Pope George something, I think, in 1540. The Pope first didn't want the Society of Jesus working for the Vatican. What convinced him was that the members of the Society of Jesus would not only take the three normal vows that every uh, devout person had to take if he wanted to become a servant of the Vatican, means the the vow of chastity, the vow of poverty, the vow of celibacy. But Ignatius of Loyola added a fourth vow. And if you want to, we can go into this fourth vow, but not today, because otherwise I'm done reading this page, because <laughs> that is so interesting and so far-leading that... Um, we can go into that another time. But because of this fall as well, the Society of Jesus was actually um, put in working uh, by, by, by the Pope at that time. And what was the Society of Jesus for? Well, we go into that later when I read this year, but actually the reason for the founding of the Jesuits was to uh, work on the Counter-Reformation. And they started that uh, with an 18-year-long uh, meeting they had that is called the Council of Trent, and that found place between 1545, so just five years after the founding of the Jesuits, or the uh, recognition by the Vatican of the Jesuits, and uh, 1563, for 18 years. But we will go into that somewhere else. But, you know, between that time, 1540, when the Jesuits were uh, officially working for the Vatican, and uh, 1773, they have been banned from a lot of countries, like even the Roman Catholic Church has been banned from uh, a lot of countries. Because the Jesuits mingled into the education, into the government, into, the, uh, into what, what, what the kings were, were saying, and, and 
they they took over. Uh, they were responsible for wars. They were responsible for uh, for um, inquisition. They were responsible for uh, revolutions. Uh, and at that time, when some people found out, they banned the Jesuits from the countries. That led to 1773, when the Pope, by a papal bull, I think, that was a papal bull, banned the Jesuits from the Roman Catholic Church in completion, totally, said they are never to be restored again. So they went underground, something their predecessors, the Templars, already did also, already in the 14th century because don't believe that the Templars in 1307 were dissolved. They just went underground. And they resurfaced on May 1st, 1776, with the work of a German called Adam Weishaupt, who was professor at canon law, a professor for canon law at the University of Ingolstadt in Germany, in Bavaria because their suppression in 1773 and the fake death of the uh, Jesuit general at that time, uh, Ritchie, I don't know his uh, first name right now. Lorenzo. Lorenzo Ritchie, thank you, Michael, Yeah, who faked his death. Um, They surfaced, they resurfaced from May May 1st, 1776, as uh, under the cover of the Illuminati which was just another front organization for them to keep on. And that helped him to infiltrate the Vatican that fast and that deep that in 1814 they took over the the complete control of the Vatican because when you read the papers, uh, we can go into that uh, another time if you you like, we can go into that when the Pope reinstalled the Jesuit order in the Vatican. Why would he do that if some 30 years before he just said they are never to be uh, come again, or 40 years before that, they are never to come again? Well, they just needed their time to take over the Vatican totally. And since then, the Vatican is completely under their control and all these other organizations that are just um, mentioned here. So I'm going to... Uh, Continue reading on this page here. Continuing. It is also important to note that the Jesuit-controlled Vatican is since 1929 being cast and accepted as a sovereign microstate called Vatican City with its own. One, head of state and cabinet, the Holy See, which consists of the papal non hereditary monarchy and the Curia. Two, central bank, which is the Vatican Bank. Three, jurisdiction rules, canon law, admiralty law. Oh, we could de- go deep into that. But. Four, some 147 international agreements, diplomatic treaties, with, uh, which were formerly called concordats, or Lateran treaties, which grant the Vatican special national privileges. Five, large radial underground network of secret archives estimated at 84 kilometers of shelving space and a large collection of ancient artworks in the Vatican Museums. And six, Universal Inquisition Office headed by the American William Levada since 2000, an Italian police force and a Swiss military guard consisting of only Catholic single males with Swiss citizenship and Swiss military train. Okay, coming back to Switzerland. Coming back to a country that was founded by the Knight Templars in 1291, or after, no, after the last crusade of 1291. I don't know the exact year. Look it up. Can't know anything by heart. It's about that time. Switzerland was founded by the Templars. So why in the name of the Swiss, the guard, the guardians of the Pope? Interesting question. Okay, continue reading. Furthermore, note that the Jesuit order, the Catholic clergy, and the military order of Malta, and many of the other papal and royal military orders, have an extremely patriarchal culture. 
this type of rigid social structure is one of the man, main aspects of fascistic groups. The Jesuits have no women. They have no love of a woman. Because to have a wife, to have a woman, means you have an allegiance to your wife and family, and you cannot obey the general. That is why they will never be married, and that's one of the great keys to their success. This is a quote of Eric John Phelps, author of the book Vatican Assassins, that goes very deep into, most and for all, the assassination of uh, John F. Kennedy. That's why the undertitle of the book Vatican Assassins is Wounded in the House of My Friends. Uh, I think when you get the real book, it's about 1,800 pages with a lot of pictures, and uh, it's very well researched, but you have to be very careful when you follow Eric John Phelps' teachings because he is teaching futurism, federalism, and he is covering up the real founding background of 1776 means of the foundation of the United States of America. Excuse me, I have to take a little drink. So, <clears throat> but the information in this book is absolutely valuable. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but for the rest, be careful. Continuing. Today, the Jesuit order has about 19,000 members. I don't know from what time that this is, but I think 19,000 is uh, much more that we have actually at this day. This article is probably some years old. Of the about 13,500 priests, some have taken the fourth vow, secret oath, in which killing a heretic is not considered a crime. The ranks of Jesuits are thinning. From 36,000 36, members at the Order's Zenith in the mid-1960s to 26,000 in 1983, 23,000 in 1995. The Jesuits are geographically organized by 91 provinces, which each belong to one of ten assistancies around the world. Let me just interrupt here. Ten assistancies around the world. Uh, you read in the Bible of the ten kings in the last days. They have not given power yet, but they will have short time of power. Ten kings, and uh, there's a map where you can see how the world is divided in ten different regions. And uh, I guess that these ten regions will be the places for the ten kings, and these are the ten assistancies of um, the Jesuits for the moment. At least in my thought of train, that makes sense. But, uh, you know, we can always go deeper into that study. Um, so it says here 23,000 uh, Jesuits in 1995. We are now 2014, uh, almost 2015. I think that the number of uh, Jesuits would have increased lately instead of decreased. There are also a lot of Jesuits coming out in the open right now that they are Jesuits and that they love to be Jesuits and uh, just for your information, if you are not aware of this, uh, the Vice President of the United States of America at this moment, uh, Biden, has two Jesuit degrees. One of them comes from Fordham, Jesuit University, the second I don't know by heart. Uh, Obama has a Jesuit degree from Notre Dame. And there are videos on the Internet you can find of his inauguration where he is uh, being presented with the alumni. Uh, alumni is one of the ranks that you have within the structure of the Jesuits, uh, like co-editor also, people like Alex Jones, who is a co-editor of uh, the Society of Jesus, but I'm not going deeper into this, I'm just going to uh, keep on reading. And the continuation goes now about the military order of Malta, or you have to take the, the real name of the military order, S-M-O-M, the Supreme Military Order of Malta, or Superior Military Order of Malta. It's more known as the S-M-O-M. That has about 12,500 members, excluding volunteers. 
and Opus Dei has about 26,000 celibate members, excluding volunteers. And actually, in a way, you can also call them to the Jesuits because they all have the same goal, you know. I mean, okay, a Knight of Malta is not a Jesuit, but a Knight of Malta is controlled by the Jesuits and controls, um, again, like, for example, in Hollywood, all the Jews they put out there who are so-called the bad guys of, uh, of Hollywood, they are all controlled by Knights of Malta in the background. And these Knights of Malta are controlled by the Jesuits behind them. So who runs Hollywood? The Jews? No, the Jews don't run anything. It's papal knighthoods because we are living in the time of the Gentiles. We are not living in the time of the Jews. Read your Bible and you will know that. The Vatican Jesuit Masonic Crusades up to our present time show their criminal full-spectrum dominance. Doctrine is effectuated all over the world by war, genocide and depopulation. Recent examples, Canadian natives genocide between 1880 and 1984. The Vatican managed Serbian genocide during World War II with an ongoing U.S. court case and the ongoing Shia Muslim genocide in Iraq with over 1,217,892 deaths. Political subversions, economic slavery, poor quality nutrition, health care and housing, government propaganda via education, media, science, and religion, suppression of sovereignty, consciousness, and spirituality. Well, I mean, just these six points that I've just read, they go so back into the stuff that we did in our earlier broadcasts. Think of the Ten Commandments of Alice Bailey with the UN. Education, media, the outlets they said they would use for social engineering, for brainwashing, economic slavery. What is that? We are all put in school and put in jobs to go into the hamster wheel to achieve nothing in our life if we don't sell out to Rome, if we don't sell out to Satan. We just go into the hamster wheel day by day, do our work, and at the end of the day, pay our taxes, think that we are free, because we don't see the bars. Because they put a lot of entertainment right before us to take our attention away from the things that really count. Poor quality nutrition. Think about in the United States of America, you can't get a soybean that is not GMO. You cannot get corn that is not GMO. And these genetically modified organ, organisms, what GMO stands for, genetically modified, are proven, of course, not when you read the books of Monsanto or whatever, but when you have a look at real serious studies, for example, in rats in a third generation to cause absolutely unfertility, absolute unfertility. So no reproduction is possible anymore. So rats have three generations, probably within a few months, with people that's a little bit longer, but three generations is about 100 years. Think about that. What's Monsanto into? Monsanto has as goal to be the monopolistic world supplier of nutrition. When we are there, they say what we can eat, what we can drink. The privatization of the water that's going on all over the world. 
the pollution of the water that's going on in the United States of America with the fracking. They do, with the drilling, you know. There are places in the United States when you turn the crane and uh, crane of water in your house and you hold a you hold a lighter to that, it starts to burn because there's coming gas out of it. Because of all the chemicals and all the things they dump in the ground when fracking, when extracting gas, natural gas and oil from the ground that wouldn't otherwise come out or would take much more effort, much more money, and that can be. Can't spend money to make money. They don't want that. They want to spend nothing and make a lot of money. That's what they do at any cost. They don't care for the environment. I guess they don't have any children. Or they know where to live and feed otherwise, but we, the normal public, <coughs> they don't care for. Poor quality nutrition, health care, well, you got Obamacare, housing, how many homeless people you have in the United States. Economic slavery, isn't it about 50 million Americans that are on food stamps? Think about it, that's every sixth person that you see. Suppression of sovereignty, consciousness and spirituality. Well, that you can do very well via the media. The suppression of consciousness and spirituality. Put human rights in front. Me, 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 me. That's exactly what Satan says. I will exalt myself above the Most High. I will sit in the congregation of the North. He put himself there where God is. And that's exactly what they do too. Okay. Continuing. We have a little part here about Masonic cities. Maybe you've heard about it, maybe you didn't. I'm just going to read it to you. The Vatican Jesuit Masonic Network operates mainly out of the following cities. First of all, the Vatican City, Rome, Italy. That is the religious center and the sovereign state since the Lateran Treaty that Mussolini signed with the Vatican in 1929. Mussolini sold it out, and that is part of the wound that got healed, that was afflicted to the Vatican by losing his temporal, let's say spiritual power, uh, civil power over the world, with the arrest of General Berthier, who was sent from Napoleon in 1798. That was the wound afflicted to the Vatican. That was the wound afflicted to the beast uh, of Revelation. And that wound started healing in 1929 with uh, the sovereign state recognition from Italy by Mussolini in 1929. Second, uh, the city of London. The city of London is not London as you know it, but it's called the Square Mile. It's a part of, well, the old part of London. It's just Square Mile. It's really the banking, um, banking center of the world. In the United Kingdom, it's an economic center. It's sovereign state since 1649 owned by the City of London Corporation. It's called the Crown. It has nothing to do with the Crown of the Queen, folks. It's something else. And third, District of Columbia, which includes Washington, D.C. D.C. stands for District of Columbia, United States of America, the military center. So you have Vatican for the spiritual, the City of London for the monetary, financial, and the District of, Col District of Columbia for the military. And those three cities are also called the, ah, oh, what's it? It's a five hour documentary over the Ring of Power. Um, I don't know, 
just lost the word about it, but these three cities actually run the world. Over the District of Columbia, very interesting. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. You will learn it from now. The District of Columbia Act of 1871, the 44th Congress, turned D.C., District of Columbia, into a municipal corporation. Congress has the supreme authority over the city and the federal district with its own special constitutional amendment since 1961. Furthermore, the District of Columbia is judicially governed by Lex Fori as opposed to Lex Cosi. You have to look Latin up to understand that. There is an increasingly common belief among many that this act has overturned the United States Constitutional Republic. Well, that is a fact that is not a belief. These theorists, no, <laughs> researchers put in the state of theorists, state that the corporate U.S. is actually operating under the name, and now it comes, all in capital letters, United States of America, noting the capital letters as a distinction from the constitutional republic. Well, uh, you have the Constitution of the United States of America and you have the Constitution for the United States of America. There's an interesting video that I uploaded on my YouTube channel, Drop the 66, from Jordan Maxwell. Uh, it's called True Lies. It's 18 parts. Each one is 10 minutes that will give you a deeper insight into um, this United States of America corporation and what it's all about and what it uh, actually is. The Jesuit Bishop John Carroll was probably the richest man in America in the late 1700s. Carroll allowed funding to construct D.C., which is nicknamed Rome on the Potomac. The owner of the land used to be Francis Pope, and his priest was Jesuit Andrew White. Francis Pope, Pope Francis. Hmm. Washington, D.C.'s original name was Rome. Did you know that? Rome, Maryland. And the branch of the Potomac River was called Tiber Creek, which was named after the Tiber River in Rome. Like Rome, Washington, D.C. has seven hills whose names are Capitol Hill, Meridian Hill, Flora Hill, Forest Hill, Hillbrook, Hillcrest, and Knox Hill. Interesting. Still, the beast of Revelation 17 is not Washington, D.C., it's Rome, the city on seven hills. Because, like we said earlier, Vatican is the spiritual leader. But interesting to see that the mirror, the second beast of Revelation 13, the capital, has also seven hills. Was nicknamed Rome on the Potomac. And that the Potomac River was called Tiber Creek. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't make things like this up. <laughs> Other Masonic elements in this city. Jesuit Georgetown University. The Masonic street layout and monuments. And the 2008 World Conference of Masonic Grand Lodges. Uh, let me just add something into here. Other Masonic elements in the city. I will not go deep into this right now. We can do that another time. But to help you with your own research when you want to research things like this, I advise you to go to the website www.granddesignexposed.com granddesignexposed, in one word, dot com. There you will find lots of information on the subject and um, that website is run by my very good friend Walt Stickel who is I think about 50% German 
So he's a half crowd. I'm a full crowd. And don't make me mad because then I'm a sour crowd. <laughs> That's a um, very nutritious cabbage, by the way. <laughs> sour crowd. Okay, other important cities? Geneva, New York, Brussels. Oh, well, that's 30 kilometers from where I live. Paris. Paris, actually, is the second Rome. The various microstates, Luxembourg, Strasbourg, Moscow, Hong Kong. All aristocratic, Masonic, corporate, political networks. <clears throat> Michael, is there something that you want to add? Is there any question that you have on the points so far mentioned? No, actually, I'm really enjoying it. I'm sorry, I've just been sucking <laughs> it in. So. Okay, um, no problem, you too. Again, no, no questions and no no debate or argument. I, everything you're saying, I have researched myself and in total agreement. So. Yeah, that's maybe an interesting point that we should mention uh, also. That do not believe me. Do not believe Michael. Do your own research. Always do your own research. What you've researched on your own, when you're really seeking the truth, that is, that you can be sure of that is true also. It all has to make sense, okay? Okay. I'm going on. Jesuit operations is the next point that uh, is on the agenda. In general, it can be said that the Jesuits are mainly involved in miseducation. Now listen to this, people. Miseducation. This is their main avenue for initial and sustained political control. Through the socially, historically, and scientifically flawed education of millions, youngsters, and adults, in addition, being able to observe and direct the professional paths of the biggest, the brightest students can help to further their own neurotic agenda, or at least not obstruct it. Consciousness influencing, aka mind control, through cultural and behavioral consensus trance shaping is their sacred and secret soul science that divins science of governing, the matrix of mental control, which has been developed by the neurotic priesthood and implemented via their Masonic networks for thousands of years. Just allow me a little explanation of the beginning of this broadcast where we were speaking about Lucy's trust and meditation and contemplative prayer and that is everything used with, let us say, everything to do with the spiritual exercises and spiritual formation. And that is exactly what I just read here. So you can see for yourself how it all interlinks. Can enough individuals break that magic trance spell to stop the mass neurosis of humanity which puts us into a world of tragedy and pain? Scientists and university research funding for the purpose of social psychological control. Subjects, politics, uh, politics, civics, law, military science, sociology, media, healthcare, psychiatry, Romanized history, astronomy, pseudo philosophy, about culture, science, civics, ethics, morality, and religion. Prominent elite schools are the Stonyhurst College in the UK, 1593, alumni. Georgetown University in the United States of America, 1634-1789, alumni. 1634 was the beginning of uh, the Georgetown School. 1789 was the founding of the university. Fordham University. United States, 1841, alumni. Well, Fordham is the university where Joe Biden has his Jesuit alumni degree from. Fairfield University, also in the United States, 1942, from alumni. 
International Visitor Leadership Program, US 1946-1961 alumni. In 1940, Nelson Rockefeller, Knight of Malta, was named coordinator of Inter-American Affairs, the precursor of the IVLP program. Uh, IVLP, we will come to that later, what that means. More than 200 current and former heads of state, 1,500 cabinet-level ministers, and many other distinguished world leaders in government and the private sector have participated in the International Visitor Leadership Program. That is what IVLP stands for, International Visitor Leadership Program. And um, there is an, uh, a link here to what that actually stands for, what that uh, means. But the problem is that um, that link doesn't exist anymore. Well, I'm not very much surprised because I'm landing here on the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs Exchange Program. And I just see the American double-headed eagle as a symbol of there, Department of State. Well, okay. I've been redirected to that page and I um, have to look it up another time if I can make another link that is maybe working for the International Visitor Leadership Program to get more into the what it is. Um, what is their next operation? So first of all, we have this miseducation by the institutions and uh, with the workings of the things that I just read. Now we go into religions, perversions, and propaganda. Cult promotion. Catholicism and its variations and infiltrations, Freemasonry, Satanism, mysticism, New Ageism, ufology, and aliens, mainly used for disinfo and distraction, but sometimes for the cover-up of advanced energy military research. Cult and disinfo promotion is also done using popularized films, books, websites, and events related to these topics. I'm going to stop reading here for a moment because we are going into ufology and aliens. Uh, ufology, and aliens uh, ufology and aliens, it says here, mainly used for disinfo and distraction, but sometimes for the cover-up of advanced energy military research. Now, you don't have to agree with me, but according to myself, there is two um, no, there, there are two ways how to explain UFOs and uh, the things that we uh, sometimes see, you know, when you look on YouTube, there are thousands of videos of uh, unknown flying objects, lights, uh, even in, in, in the mainstream television, it was uh, like, in, uh, I think it was 1950 something, uh, with these uh, lights hovering over the White House that went worldwide. <clears throat> this UFO there. So, according to me, that is my opinion, I, I say that, my opinion, there is two kinds of aliens. There is, what is said here, the advanced military research, knowledge that is hidden from us, that goes back to the time of the Third Reich in Germany, uh, where they also already had anti-gravity uh, engines and flying disks. And then with Operation Paperclip and these things, a lot of this technology came over to the United States of America. And uh, two years after World War II ended in 1947, you had the Roswell incident. And that was, of course, to see how would people react if something with aliens really happened after that program that ran on the radio in the 1930s about this invasion from Mars from H.G. Wells. I'm not going into that right now. You can do your own research on that point. So this is one part, what aliens are. They are just hidden human technology. On the other hand, you have Satan, Lucifer, who was cast on the earth and together with him, a third of the angels of heaven. These angels are now bad angels, fallen angels, or you could call them demons. 
They can shape shift, they can take any form they want, they can be light, they can be ships, they can be persons, they can be animals, they can be a tree, they can be anything you want, or anything they want. And I am convinced that there is no, absolutely no, extraterrestrial life in this universe except from the life that God created on this earth. You can agree or you can disagree. I don't care. That's my point of view. But of course there are these angels, these demons, that can be lights, that can be anything that we see here. And they are working together with the cabal, with some people, through possession, through control. They have an agenda. And to me, it is no coincidence that um, in 1986, I think, Ronald Reagan did that speech and said, what would happen if we were faced with an alien threat? What would humanity do? And when you go into other research, you go into Bill Cooper, he speaks of a meeting that took place in, if I'm not mistaken, 1917 in Japan, where there was the question raised that humanity should try, or that the leaders of the humans should try to convince humanity of an extraterrestrial threat, threat to combine them. Because what's their goal? Their goal is one world government. One world religion, one world economy, one world altogether. How can you get all the people together when you make them fear something? Okay, that's why you are put constantly in fear. Like now with this Ebola virus, that's another hoax. People, when you listen to this and you are afraid of Ebola, don't be. There's a very easy remedy for that. That is collodial silver, nano silver. Look that up. Um, even when you Google it right now, there's already an organization that came out with it that is 100% proven working. And if all these chemical antibiotics are not working anymore, collodial silver is. And uh, I can assure you that I have even personal experience with me and even my mother, where well, it's proven where doctors couldn't help, collodial silver did help. So with this fear-mongering that I do, and they try to get the people all together, and my point of view of aliens, okay, is there are no aliens, there is no extraterrestrial life, like we know it here on the Earth, like they want to tell there's people on Mars, there's people on Venus, there's people in Pleiades, or I don't know, wherever. No, that's, to my opinion, not true. There's only hidden, advanced military research, military objects, and there are fallen angels disguising as aliens. Okay. Continuing. That was the point. Cult promotion. Then we have also Catholic ecumenism through the Mennonite World Conference in 1925 in Switzerland, the World Jewish Congress in 1936 in Switzerland, the World Council of Churches, 1937, with 340 churches. The Lutheran World Federation, 1947, with 140 churches. The Conference of European Churches, in 1959, with 125 churches meetings. World Alliance of Reformed Churches, 1970, with 214 churches. And the World Methodist Council of 1881. So that's religious perversions and propaganda. And the next point is political and judicial meddling. What are the tactics? Well, the first tactic is something you've probably heard about. It's called Hegelian dialectic. What is that, in short? You have thesis. Opposed to that, you have antithesis. And when you merge them together, you have synthesis. Hegelian dialectic deception politics by creating, infiltrating, controlling multiple sides to further their own agenda. Thesis plus antithesis gets synthesis. Some examples. 
You just had elections in the United States of America today or yesterday, yeah? right? Oh, and the Republicans grew strong. Why? Because people are not very satisfied with the politics of Obama, Democrat. So they say, oh, probably the Republicans are going to do better. They forgot what, uh, all about George Bush, I guess. Listen, left versus right political dogma. Democrats versus Republicans. Liberals versus conservatives. Labour versus Tory, etc. This is the political duopoly play trap when the voting outcome can only swing into main, uh, two main directions. Any emerging of true political opposition is deflected and extinguished by temporary controlled opposition spin-offs from the main parties and the media blackouts and or smear campaigns. <laughs> Think of the election in 2012 and Ron Paul went for uh, the presidency in the United States and what kind of a smear campaign that was. Yeah, but do you think that Ron Paul really stood for what the American people wanted? Uh, you probably do, but then you don't know that Ron Paul was several times in Rome and that he made a speech in front of Jesuit Georgetown University and that he is a member of the Birch Society and the Jason Society, and I don't know what society all, and that he is a Mason, and that he is just controlled opposition. Left, right, political dogma. You know, think of, think of a bird. A bird's got two wings and a body and a head. The right wing the Republicans, the left wing is the Democrats, those are just the same, the wings of the same bird. But what determines the direction the birds fly in? The right wing, the left wing, or the head of the bird? What do you think? When you push your fist into a wall, what does that? Your fist or your brain? Well, if you can't figure this out, you should probably go home and do something else and listening to this broadcast because then you are so Coca-Cola Zero dumped down that you don't get it anymore. I don't mean to offend anybody, but if you think that your fist thinks for you, well, that's an expression of speech, but actually it's the brain. So, left, right, political dogma, wings of the same bird, it's the hat that sets the direction, right? Next point, the present focus of many media corporations on Muslim terror threats. Ooh, Muslim terror threats, yeah, they must be very afraid of Muslim terror when they elect a Muslim as president for eight years over there. <laughs> Especially after the mass trauma psyops of 9-11 is part of their strategy of tension to divide groups by fear and polarize people's frustrations and anger towards this synthesized enemy or its controlled opposition instead of the real fascistic threat from the uh, secretive power structures. <laughs> 19 Afghan camel jockeys went into a few planes, took with two, with two planes down three skyscrapers in the city of New York. Those were all Muslims. And a few years later, the whole of America votes a Muslim president. How suicidal dumb can you get? Michael, please say something. <laughs> I'm falling off my chat. <laughs> it is pretty absurd. You're doing a great job, by the way, and it is everything you're saying is absolutely the truth. It's just, uh, you know, well, fortunately, you know, for us, the Lord's given you an ability to uh, communicate it. And the best, actually, this is the best I've ever heard it. All the, 
I think that I've listened to and read. You've done the best job so far of tying it all together for a friend. It's uh, yeah, you yeah, know, it is. It's absolutely absurd, isn't it? You know, and um, isn't it a joke? It is. It's total joke. It's uh, it's total. And now, now with the Republicans running the Senate again, and then people just thinking, now it's going to change. <laughs> they forgot about the thirty Bush years they had. <laughs> <laughs> because because when when Reagan was on. Who was behind him? Who was the puppet master behind Reagan? George Bush Senior. And after C uh, after Bo George uh, after Reagan came George Bush himself. Then came Clinton, who was Jesuit educated at Georgetown University. Nice Malta, nice Malta. Oh, I'm getting so funny. And then after him came alcoholic Bush Junior. The guy who was more stoned and drunk in the time of office than anything else. He couldn't even hold a book up when he read to children in school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, funny story, yeah. That I mean, I wonder how story, much that book was about the story of a goat. Yeah, I wonder goat how much of that was just theater, you know what I mean? That uh, particular uh you can read to the kids and had book upside down and all that. Yeah. You know, knowing how yeah. the Jesuits work, and it just—and it's it, about a goat that is a, a symbol for Satan. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, stop me whenever you want because we are two hours twenty in the broadcast. So I don't well, know I how. Mean, if you're if you're on a roll, keep on going. I'm I'm, I'm on a roll until tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's twenty yeah, past ten. Yeah. Yeah. Only thing I can say to anybody who's listened to this to seriously listen to what you were saying, I'm not. And yours praise for say, but the Lord has oh. given him the ability <clears throat> to put it all together. And um, I don't know how many people are, are going to recognize how blessed they are to hear this, but I, I recognize it all, and it's all true. And it's not just American bashing and this and that. It's the truth, folks. I mean, the fact well, because that we, the average American uh, person, citizen, um, doesn't even know that it is that way because they are so deluded, they are so diverted from the truth and information of this with all the football and Super Bowl and Hollywood movies and television series and all that stuff. It's not their fault. It's, no. it's like it's like you know it's it's like the Catholics. They can't do anything about that. They are so betrayed. They just believe men, and Catholics Catholics don't know the Bible because the Roman Catholic Church is absolutely a Bible hater, always has been, and puts the man uh, puts the word of man always in front of uh, the word of God, yeah. and 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 that's the big problem. So, of course, when when we study this thing here and there, of course we laugh a little bit with these people, but it's not. It's not in, you know, how can I put this? They're under a strong um, delusion. It's, like not, it's, not, it's not laughing at them because they are so stupid. It's because we cannot believe that these actions of, in this example, for example, the Jesuits, the education system, everything that we have, is really working that far to dump the people that far down. You know, I have prepared something else for tonight, and that is a list of books that I have here. And one of the one of the books that I have here, and I advise everybody to download that from the internet, is called "The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America." It's a book by Charlotte Thompson Isabite, "The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America: A Chronological Paper Trail," Conscience Press, and. Um, this is very interesting to read. It's a book from 1999. You can get that online on PDF. Um, you know, Jorg, I, I think I see things are so bad that it only takes at least. Uh, well, I don't. It's so bad that it takes an act of God to wake you up at this point. I really believe that. I look at you. I look at me. I know. You know, before, long before we accept Christ, he, I believe, at least for me, he was working on me. I guess several years ahead of time, maybe even a lifetime, if you will, but and that's, that's several years ahead of time, uh, waking up to all these different issues, 
making up to the Hegelian dialect of how they, you know, this, about the fraud that, of, you know, this two-party system that we're under, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. To get to a point where I could be even receptive enough to say, well, and humble enough to even, just to fall on my face and say, okay, God, uh, hopefully you're really there. And uh, because, you know, uh, I have no clue what's going on and I cannot do anything about this. You know, so. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's. I feel for the. It's, it's, it's so pathetic that you get to a point you just have great compassion. And you have to keep on looking at it. At least for me, I have to keep looking at myself and where I was. And the only reason why that I'm even here listening to you, Yor, is because it's an act of God. It's not because how great I am, how smart I am. I'm an idiot. No, it's, uh, it's, Michael, it's, it's, it's like I said in the beginning, this broadcast is not about me, this broadcast is not about you, this broadcast is about Jesus. It's for Jesus that we do that, because when we are reading this stuff, because we are interested in this, I can't help it, I'm interested in this, I'm not interested in all the stuff they put out in this material world. I am interested in the spiritual kind of life. I am interested in what's behind it. I'm interested in finding the truth and to search the truth. And I can only say that once you've tasted the truth, you never want to go back. You want more of it. And I am at that moment that I want more of it. And I want to share it with as many people as possible. And a broadcast like this, like my YouTube channel also, helps to get the truth out to the people. And it is like always it was in the history of mankind. The people who tell the truth are not very much loved in this world. And I don't care if you love me or if you hate me. Just try to listen and think for yourself and make sense of it. Because it all didn't make sense to me in the beginning. That's why I was a heretic. I mean, an atheist, a non-believer in, in, in God, non-believer in Jesus Christ. Because it didn't make sense to me. But when you get into the studies and when you really see the real history, not the history that is taught to you in schools and in books and in movies and all that stuff, I mean, there's so much coming on in this article, in this site here, that we can talk about. And really, it's going on until tomorrow morning, but I don't want to make a broadcast of three hours or something because then the people will not have the attention. Then we, we can better well, take you know, one and a half hours to go on. Go on for a few minutes more. There's a few things that I, more that I want to say, and then we can make a break, and then we can make another broadcast and, and start from there and go further sure. in the same subject. You know, I, I, I don't want to do three hours or more because nobody is uh, listening three hours at a time for, for things like this. And it would be a shame to take the people the, uh, the attention span away and um, then they don't listen anymore. And, you know, you always have to take a break here and there it's in care just to think of something else and, and then go back to this. I mean Well here's the other thing too, we're just you know these are recorded episodes so and a person can listen to them over and over again and at any time stop it, pause it, go back to it. So you know, as far as time goes, it's more of a relevance of the people who are on the call now than it is about the majority that we'll be listening to in the future. So <laughs> that is my okay. own observation how this show works. You know, okay. we can have by two, three, five, maybe half a dozen people listening to the show when it's live, but it, it is multiply that by ten, that's what the actual people are going to be listening to it in the future, you know what I mean? At least so far, you know what I mean? I don't know what it's going to be like a year from now, but so. All right, let's stop this uh, useless conversation then. I will just go on reading, and thank you very much, Shadow Girl, for uh, giving us the support and uh, you have no problem listening. I love it. Thank you very much. And I will continue. I also had uh, someone from New York as well. So, and uh, I believe it was the same person that I met earlier in the show earlier today. So. And, uh, ah, I thought I thought New York has left. Well, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. they can always come back. That's the thing. When I say New York, it's like yeah, yeah, that's right. You that's know what right. I mean? It's and hopefully they come back and listen more and more and more. Because basically, folks, if you haven't figured, for anybody who listens to this uh, can't hasn't figured it out, what you, we're gonna you're offering in this couple hours, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a wealth of information. And you're going to find in the long run that somebody like you who spent all this time prior to you 
researching all this stuff, is now putting it down in a form that's the format that is for a couple hours. You know, you could take, you know, six months to find out, or a year to find out what your organization is sharing with you. On your own time, spending 40 hours a week, I know this because of my own journey, and so it's really, you know, I see the value in this. I know the truth in what your organization is saying because I've done the research, uh, <clears throat> enough of it, uh, and, that, and I won't say how, because I was so great, so wonderful. I really believe that the Lord forced me to do this, so that at some point I could get to this, uh, get to the point of being part of this, and, you know, serve Him. So, um, and if that, I'll, I'll shut up and I'll let you go back first. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm going to continue about uh, the political and judicial meddling um, that the Jesuits do. We have had already two points. Uh, that was the left-right political dogma, uh, Hegelian dialectic, and um, some examples. We have had now the left-right political dogma. We have had um, the present focus on many media corporations on the Muslim terror threats. threats. And now we go to the third <clears throat> example, that is the artificial global food price crisis versus the centralization of food management structures. Examples, Codex Alimentarius, UN Agenda, genetically modified food controversies, such as the resistance to correct labeling and nutrition reductions, reductions sorry, compared to natural whole foods. Um, there is an interesting video that I have uploaded on my second YouTube channel, George as War, on this info from Anne Bressington. Uh, look it up. That deals about uh, Codex Alimentarius Agenda 21. And the fourth point, a fourth point, non-aligned movement promoted as a force against the United Nations, misleading people to casuistry. Masonic insider promotion, infiltration, bribing, threats, and assassinations. If the Catholic missions, the Jesuit miseducation and sociopolitical infiltration strategies do not work in a society, a covert and later an overt, war by proxy is created to achieve their neurotic goals. See also the social perversions point below. So that's something we will go to. Um, the next tactics they use, using the many concordats that have been signed with sovereign nations to give the Vatican institution special privileges. Um, just before I keep on reading here about this concordat, there's maybe one concordant, one concordant um, that you are not very much aware of, but I as a German am, and that is that within half a year after Hitler took power in 1933 in Germany and formed the Third Reich and his Nazi dictatorship, um, the German government signed a concordat with uh, von Papen, who was the power behind Adolf Hitler, he was von Papen was a knight of Malta, and he went to the Vatican and signed a concordat with the Vatican, with um, what's the name again? Uh, he became later Pope Pius the Eleventh, Pope Pius the Twelfth. Sorry, Pope Pius the Twelfth. Um, I forgot his name right now. It's on the top of my tongue. Uh, I, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, they sound, they signed, a, signed a concordat with Germany because Hitler, of course, was Catholic, something people often do not know. And even though it is told to us Germans that after the so-called allies freed us from the National Socialist dictatorship at the end of the Second World War, Germany had been denazified. The Concordat, the Third Reich signed with the Vatican, is still in power today. Hmm. So, what about this denazification? What about we don't live in Germany now under Nazi laws anymore? All we do is living under Nazi laws. But, you know, the subject of Germany is something else, and uh, 
for that I can advise you to go study the reading I did with um, Walt Stickel, the Jesuits derooting the Reformation. That's another, um, for the moment, seven-part broadcast on TalkShoe that we did last year. We're going to continue probably next year about that. But that goes more into that. But just saying this Concord that they have signed there, because that gives the Vatican institution special privileges. And social fascist supernatural union projects, like Central American Union 1991, Central American Integration System, or European Union 1993 with the euro currency that we have today, that was established in 2001. Ah, is that the same year 9-11 happened? Hmm, okay. Um, the EU institutions and the EU projects. The EU, the European Union, has its origins in the European movement from 1947, which was founded by Knight of Malta Joseph Rettinger, who also founded in 1945 the Bilderberg Group. Have you ever heard of the Bilderbergers? Well, if not, look them up. They are like the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Group, a very important secret society with their own website where they say everything that's interesting, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, well, heads of state go there. German politicians who go there become chancellor afterwards. Ooh, what a surprise. Uh, Obama and... Hillary, the witch, Clinton, were at the Bilderberg meeting in 2008. Mm. Interesting. Okay, we also have the African Union from 2002. We have the Asian Union or Asian Cooperation Dialogue from 2002 also. And 2003 proposed the Pacific Union then proposed in 2004 and signed in 2008 the South American Union. And we have also the North American Union, which proposed, uh, under other things, for example, the Amero. And the North American Union are, um, the, um, is uh, the combination of Canada, United States of America and Mexico, they will take down the borders. They are doing that already right now. They are now infiltrating a lot of Mexicans through the borders into the South of America, into Texas, into California, into the states that have a border with Mexico. Why do they do that? Well, Mexico is for, I don't know, 80, 90 percent Catholic. They are over flooding the United States of America with Catholics. They have money or not, if they have a job or not, I don't care. It's just they are Catholics, and that is the agenda they follow. The NACC from 2006 is a largely secretive advisory council to the SPP from 2005, consisting of representatives from 30 North American corporations selected by the chambers of commerce in the three nations. You also have the Mediterranean Union proposed in 2007. The Vatican City microstate is a member of ITU, that is a telecommunications company, of CEPT, that is also telecommunications, of Eutelsat of Eutelsat, that is a satellite communications uh, company, Intelsat, which is a satellite communication company, UPU, that is International Mail, and the International Grains Council. The Holy See, which is a Vatican organization, participates as an observer in the African Union, the Arab League, the Council of Europe, the OAS, which is the 35 states of the Americas, the IOM, this migration, and in the United Nations since 1942 and its many agencies as there are. I don't use the 
abbreviations, I just tell you what all these different agencies are about. They are about food and agriculture, labor, trade and investment, environment, education, science and culture, human settlements, refugees, industry, tourism, food programs, healthcare, patents, copyrights and trademarks. One of the few names that you probably will remember is UNESCO, that stands for the Education, Science and Culture. And by the way, something interesting that you probably haven't known yet, I bet my ass you don't know that, the first chairman of the UNESCO was the brother of the writer Aldous Huxley, Julian Huxley. Aldous Huxley wrote in the 1930s the book Brave New World. And when you don't know that, you probably know George Orwell's 1984. That is written in 1948. Mm, what a coincidence. That is just a change of numbers. And Aldous Huxley wrote Brave New World, where there are people living in the future. People are made uh, in a factory, not conceived by sex anymore. Sex is forbidden. They are all on a drug called Soma to put them in constant place of trance and uh, people are put in different classes, working classes and all that stuff. And I got to know by an interview I listened to from Alan Watt, who has a website that is called Cutting Through the Matrix. Uh, he disclosed in one of his broadcasts that uh, Aldous Huxley uh, not far away from his death in the 1960s somewhere in an interview said the book that I have written was not fiction. It was the actual plans of the people who run this world. And his brother, Julian, was the first chairman of the UNESCO which is in the UN responsible for education, science, and culture. Oh, think about that. <laughs> the Holy See also participates as a guest in NAM. I don't know what that uh, the abbreviation stands for, and as a full member of the IAEA, the nuclear energy. Ah, oh, do you know that with all this uh, IAEA stuff going on with Iran the last years? It also participates in the OPCW, which is for chemical weapons, the OSCE, which is international security, and... Um, other UN agencies like IPOSOC, UNFPA, UNODC, and UNDPI, which are all for economy, population, and reproduction, drugs control, and UNDPI stands for public information. Oh, it's called propaganda. Then there are here a few links made to, when you click on them, Codex Alimentarius. I have a video uploaded on that, but that's in German. United Nations and Lucis Trust. Hmm. All intermingled, huh? In an executive order, March 7th, 2007, President <laughs> Puppet George W. Bush granted diplomatic immunity and privileges to the members of the Holy See's permanent observer mission to the United Nations. Diplomatic immunity ensures safe passage for diplomats outside their home country. They are not subject to lawsuits or prosecution under the laws of the host country. So like every other diplomat, they are immune and they can do whatever they want and there is no law in America that can
put them to jail or whatever. Fine them. They don't even have to pay parking tickets. That's one of the funniest parts when I saw this movie with uh, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. Um, what's it called? Um, these two guys that play policemen, and I think it is in the, in the first part or in the second in the second part. I don't know um, where they are against the South African guy. Lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think it's the second part of Lethal Weapon against these um, against the South African guy who stands there after he did all the atrocities, holding up his diplomatic passport. Diplomatic immunity, and he shoots him down anyway. Okay, so for one second something bad happens, and I really have to laugh. Diplomatic immunity doesn't protect you from a gunshot. Anyway, uh, George W. Bush granted diplomatic immunity and privileges to the member of the Holy See's Permanent Observance Mission to the United Nations. Gordon Brown, that is... Um, the former Premier Minister of the United Kingdom, has discussed a shake-up of structure created in 1945 to reflect the world's new challenges and power bases during his four-day trip to China and India. Last night, British sources revealed intense discussions on UN reform were underway and Mr. Brown raised it whenever he met another world leader. Mr. Brown will unveil a proposal to the UN to spend 100 million pounds a year on setting up a rapid reaction force to stop failed states sliding back into chaos after a peace deal has been reached. Civilians such as police, administrators, judges and lawyers would work alongside military peacekeepers. Fraud and corruption have been rampant at the UN's multi-billion dollar procurement divisions for years. The world body's own watchdog, the Office of Internal, Internal Oversight Services, has documented some of the illegal activities and reports that reveal how nearly one-third of the procurement contracts involve waste, corruption, and other irregularities. Americans should be concerned because the United States annually gives the United Nations 5.3 billion U.S. dollar taxpayer dollars. 5.3 billion. The funding continues even though the organization founded six decades ago to maintain international peace and security. Oh, peace and security. When they talk about peace and security, what's going to happen biblically? Nations will be shaken. A nation again, nation will rise. Has failed miserably and is best known for its severe mismanagement and corruption. Boys and girls, 5.3 billion U.S. taxpayer dollars a year. What could you achieve with that if you put that into the economy? Total, totally opposed to what's happening right now. You could really make something of the economy, but you know, they will never do that because they are not interested in building up the economy of the United States. All they want is to bring down the middle class. And why do they want that? Well, because we are talking about the New World Order. And the New World Order is nothing else than the Old World Order. And the old world order was the time when the Pope of Rome had civil and spiritual authority over all the nations in the, at that time, known world. Every king, every president, well, there were no presidents at that time, there were only kings and princes and emperors, was under the yoke of Rome. And then came the Reformation. And the Reformation freed man from the yoke of Rome and gave us liberty, conscience, liberty of conscience. And that is very, very important. And it also gave us 
the middle class. Because before there was no middle class. There is a book written by J.A. Wiley called Rome and Civil Liberty. And on page 13 to 16 he writes, God alone is Lord of the conscience. That was the truth that set Europe free. Referring to the Reformation at that time. Based on the Bible and the Bible alone. And what is the answer of the Roman Catholic Church? When you read the Catholic Encyclopedia, volume 12, page 496. By the way, this is not from the document I'm, I'm reading. This is something that's other knowledge. <laughs> Quote, the supremacy of the Bible as source of faith is unhistorical, illogical, fatal to the virtue of faith and destructive of unity. It is unhistorical. End of quote. So there you see how the Catholic doctrine is just exactly opposite of the Protestant doctrine, the doctrine, Protestant ideas. No? But uh, it's not a matter of what is true that counts, but a matter of what is perceived to be true. That, by the way, is um, coming from Henry Kissinger, who is a Knight of Malta and a High Freemason. But before I slip away here, yeah, I'm going to read on about social perversions. Oh, that sounds interesting. I think we covered a little bit like that. Uh, so with already uh, the Ten Commandments of um, the Devil of Alice Bailey's uh, points of the UN we were talking about. Fascism ideology. Hmm, by the way, in the words of the Jesuits, their own, fascism is the ideology that comes closest to their ideas. Fascism ideology, inquisitions, communism, labor Zionism, Nazism, socialism, and centrally planned capitalism focus on fear propaganda, conformity, surveillance, and repression. How oh, does that sound any familiar when you look around in the world that we live in today? Fear propaganda? Conformity? You have to love all the gay people. You have to love all the lesbian people. You have to love all the pedophiles too, I guess. Otherwise, you are not politically correct. Surveillance and repression? Surveillance? Hmm. Wasn't there something going on with the so-called NSA? And surveillance of cell phones, emails, and all that stuff? Hmm. I think that when you open your eyes and really see where all that stuff comes from, why? Right? Other social perversions are indigenous Jewish, Christian, Muslim, sovereign culture, genocides, poverty promotion, and middle class destruction. Oh, didn't I say that a little bit before? Damn, I was right again. And pedophile ring support. <laughs> uh, I mentioned that also before. I haven't read this article yet. I, I read along while I see that I'm reading right things, but you see, the research always takes you to the right points. It all comes up. Poverty promotion and middle class destruction. Well, look around you in the United States of America. Take an example. I mean, I live in Europe. What do I know of America? Go to Detroit. Hmm? What a great city that was in the 60s. End 50s, begin 60s. With the big three. General Motors, Ford and Chrysler the big car companies being there, giving work to a lot of people. Look at Detroit today. Look at Detroit today. It's a slum. It's broken. 
can't pay its bills. There once was a video that I saw about the truth about Detroit from, I don't know if you know him, uh, Stefan Molyneux. Uh, Stefan Molyneux, he has a YouTube channel. He's a philosopher. He's an anarchist. And, uh, he's from Canada. He's good stuff. Uh, I don't know if he's from Canada. I do. I listen oh. to a lot of... There was a period about three months where I listened to a ton of his stuff. So. Well, I was, I was uh, subbed to his YouTube channel for years. Yeah. A year or two or whatever. I saw a lot of videos of him. And he made one of the videos of uh, the truth about Detroit. When you look up in his uploads, you search for that one. That is really, really worth the while watching. Then you will understand what happened to that city. And then you will understand what I mean with middle class destruction. Like I said in the beginning of when I started ranting about all this stuff, uh, the new world order is nothing else but the old world order. In the old world order, you have the peasants, you have the laymen, and you have the um, noble, the noblemen. And in between, you had nothing. There was no middle class. There was the lay people and there was a nobleman and nothing else. And that's freedom that came, that building of the middle class that came with the Reformation. And that made people free. And that is something, of course, they do, the middle class destruction. They have to destroy the middle class to have only the elite and the sheep. Or the lemmings. Continue reading. Controlling the Vatican institution and its wealth, financial administration, archive management, policy, speech, project approval, clergy, promotions, etc. Parts of this work are delegated to the Opus Dei organization. Controlling and working together with an even older and more secretive multi-layered papal military order called Sovereign Military Order of Malta, Knights of Malta, Knights Hospitalis, or SMOM for short, like I said in the beginning. The SMOM was founded in Jerusalem in 1080 to wage war and steal for the benefit of the Holy Roman Empire. Today, the most influential groups within the SMOM are the Order of the Garter and the Pilgrim Society. We can go deeper into these societies or we can just go deeper into the uh, military order of Malta. But I see that this is a quite long point and uh, I want to say that I want to bring the broadcast here to a finish and we will continue next broadcast with the military order of Malta operations, uh, how they are built together, who are the members out there, uh, who is all in there, and there's a lot to tell about. And um, Well, I think this is something for our next broadcast. So, I thank you very much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed yourself as I enjoyed myself in our idea. Wow, if I knew that this was so so great that I would have made it my work, but the problem is nobody will pay me for the truth that I'm telling because nobody wants to pay. <laughs> nobody no. wants to pay for the truth. <laughs> yeah, there's not much money in the truth. If you want to sell fantasies yeah. and fables, then you probably make a lot of money. But no, but truth. I enjoyed myself really. I had a very, very great time and I hope everybody who's listening tonight and even on the later moment when you download it or when you listen to it online and please spread this I mean except of stealing almost three hours time from someone um, you're not doing anything wrong and then they can make up their own mind and they can see if this is the truth or if this is not the truth uh, when you want to know what the truth is there's a very easy explanation for that you have to think about it's just Truth is independent of opinion. And the point is, in our society today, it's all about opinion building. And you form your opinion on basis on the things that you know. And what do you know? You know the things that you read in your newspaper, that you listen to in the radio, and that you watch on television. And once you understand that all that is wrong information, that is not the truth. 
So you form your opinion on indoctrinated false information. By that definition, your opinion is wrong. Truth is independent of opinion by its very definition. Truth is intolerant of error. Every aspect petitioning the conscience for acknowledgement. But you, the individual, hold the key to admission or rejection of the truth in your life. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for this broadcast. God bless you, and goodbye. Thank you, Jorg. Uh, that was an excellent, excellent three hours. And uh, I think I'm just going to wrap it up with uh, reading Ephesians chapter 6. Um, and then we, I will close up the show. And um, this is a reminder as well before I start reading. At 10 o'clock tonight, Tom Fress is going to be leading a uh, group discussion on the Ten Commandments. Uh, Monday, if it all works out, James Arnett from jamesjapan.com is supposed to be on at 8 p.m. Eastern, which would be the Tuesday morning his time. Um, and uh, I don't have anything else really majorly planned. Um, hopefully next week we get together with York. Um, I have to get together with you, York, about my schedule and all that kind of thing. So. When I don't have my son, unfortunately, when I have my three-year-old son, I really don't have any time to do much of anything. So, with this, I'm going to read uh, chapter 6 of Ephesians. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provide not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and an admonition of the Lord. Servants, obey them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness in your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye and ye masters do the same thing unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and put the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about the tr with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. <clears throat> Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, 
which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto you, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Okay, I want to give you a little more, but we'll just read this last two verses here. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ sincerely. Amen. And with that, folks, I'm going to say uh, have a good day. God bless you. Remember to keep the Lord in your thoughts and keep um, you know us and, and God's people in, in your prayers. Uh, remember once again to uh, pray for uh, Sean. Anybody else has been on the show? You know, people are trying, like like your or Walt Stickle or Tom Fress or the others who've been trying to share the truth, folks. And they're not asking for a penny to do it. They're just sharing the truth, serving the Lord, so, and helping us wake up. So, thanks, York. Thank you, and everyone else. Have a good day. Bye-bye.